Hey everyone, and welcome to Already Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Star Trek, the original series, season 2, episode 8. It is called I Mud. Full spoilers for the episode, as always. So, as the title implies, this is the glorious return, the triumphant return of one Harry Mud. It's beautiful. <laughs> Especially since we're going to have uh, uh, Dwight from The Office playing him at Maybe next week on Star Trek Discovery. Depend. I don't know if he shows up in the next next episode, but it's soon, if not next week. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we should put. This is the first review of this since Star Trek Discovery. That's a good point. Aired. Yeah. It's funny going back to this. It's like, oh man, this is so. Like, it's, it's a it's a strange experience, isn't it? Yeah. This Discovery. <laughs> like every time it cuts to the ship in Discovery, it's like this beautiful, tranquil thing. It's like, oh my god, I'm in space. I'm on LSD. And every time it cuts to the ship, and this is like, oh yeah, there's you know, there's a model going going past. And it's not mm. really because this is the updated effects, but it still has that kind of feel to it. It's very yeah, uh, what it is. But uh, not that I'm complaining. Uh, there's a charm to this, and of course, it was made when it was made, and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, so we're in this weird space now where we're actually reviewing a new Star Trek show alongside doing the old yes. one. Yes, we're, we're, we're at the newest and the oldest at the same time. Yes, although luckily for us, the new show is a prequel set just 10 years before this show, so in terms of the actual Star Trek timeline, we haven't ruined cl- anything. We're as close as we possibly could be. Yeah. Because ne- next gen is like 50, 60 years after the original yeah. series, so this is as close as you can get. Yeah, <laughs> so, this is, this is gold. Uh, so what is this episode? This episode actually starts off because obviously I knew the name of the episode was I Mud. So you're waiting for it, aren't you? So I'm waiting for Mud, but the episode doesn't start with Mud. The episode starts with oh no, some robot has infiltrated the crew and he's like commandeered the ship. If they try and do anything, if they try and recalibrate anything or take control, the ship will explode. It's taking them to some location where he, the robot says we need you to come here. Yeah, because he doesn't even know it's a robot at first. Yeah. Oh yeah, he says it's a person, and then he says we, and then he opens up his stomach, and you see like metal and parts and spinning things, and it's like okay, right? So we got an android, fun stuff. Yeah. And they take him to this planet, and it, it, they make most of the main characters, everyone but Sulu and Scotty. Although they take Scotty down later, Sulu is just oddly absent for the episode. But they well, take we got Chekhov on instead, so it's fine. Yeah, we got Chekhov, and they go out of this planet, and they're led through this these doors, or these these other women robots kicking around we open these doors and who is sitting there on a throne but Harry Mudd so good honestly this episode is really frustrating for me because I really like the first like chunk of it and it kind of it gets worse and worse as it goes along see this is where I know like, I can just tell I'm watching this this is an episode people don't like but that last like 15 odd minutes or so i kind of love even though it's kind of awful oh yeah i was not feeling the, the last chunk of that because for me there's a good bit of mystery with the robot where's he taking them and then we get to harry and probably my favorite section of the episode is this whole ch- first chunk with harry where he's telling his story of how he escaped captivity or imprisonment and he stole a ship and all that but everything basically kirk spock and mccoy are translating everything he says as he says it so he's like oh i borrowed a, a little shuttle it's like he stole a shuttle <laughs> then uh, some some people didn't take too kindly to that they chased them in the shuttle like and they, they were translating it the whole way and the whole thing was just really cracking me up and then the other time i laughed a lot which really set me off it's like after this scene two of the, the lady bots take them to this other room and they just sort of keep standing there, and Kirk's like, right, off, off you go. I was like, why should we leave? Because we don't like you. Sure you go. <laughs> and he's, he does a little <laughs> he hand them, and, them. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Uh, and that cracked me up. Unfortunately, from there, I wasn't really into the rest of the episode, which is basically just that all these robots have a hive mind, and they want to study them and not leave, let them go. So the whole episode's about them trying to trick the robots into letting them go. And I think that could be fun, but ultimately it was just them in a series of rooms, and it led to this... 15 minute mime act to confuse which them. is which is which is the part i had a lot of fun with even though i know it I sh- i'm looking at this going this is awful i know people hate this episode for this i can just see it like <laughs> i can see the internet hates this but i kind of love it i wasn't I, help it. Myself. I, I thought it was okay 
for the first little bit when I realised what they were doing because they, they do it for just a couple of the, the lady bots at first mm. and instead of like they, they just start doing things randomly it don't make sense because the whole idea is if they break the logic parts of their brains it'll fry them because they can't comprehend what, what they're doing mm. so so they you know they say oh you're dead but then they jump up and they, so they'll, they'll just constantly try to confuse them and doing lots of random dance movements and whatnot. It was fine for the first scene, and then they go to do it to the other characters and the main dude, the main robot, and it just goes on for so long. I was bored to tears by the end of it. This is it. I can't defend it. I can't because it's awful. But have fun. <laughs> this is this is one of those weird moments. You, you know, every so often you'll watch a film or something, and you know, critics will tear it to shreds, and you look at it and go, "Yeah, I get why they did that, but I loved it anyway." That, that's me with this like section of this episode. It's, well, you you it's it's, it's illogical. Oh, there you go. Use, to use the word from the show, yes. yeah. Uh, yeah, I I liked the Harry stuff early on, but once it became just about trying to trick the robots, it just completely lost me. Uh, and you have the, the joke at the end where Harry's punishment is that the a robot of his wife, his ex wife, is like there's copies of her, and she's like going to nag him for eternity as his punishment. Uh, that's very good. It was mainly amusing, but uh, I don't. I think I think the problem for me is that I never felt like there was really any stakes. Like, because once Harry Mudd became like apparent, it was like okay, right. So this is just a fun episode, and then for the rest of the episode, it really did feel. Even though okay, they're kind of trapped, but I don't really feel the the stakes of it. And the fact that they, they defeat them in such a stupid extended way just kind of added to that and at the end when they're all laughing at Harry like they're getting nagged at he's like you know four of his wives are all just nagging at him at the same time and like all, all six of them in characters are like ah ha 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 he, he's in hell ha 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 and they all leave like laughing I'm like okay right fine next episode please I'm done there's a charm to it I enjoyed what could I say yeah. what could I say I enjoyed them laughing and, and pretend explosives and ha- ha- Harry's good then, obviously then, like then, Harry, then fake but... killing Scotty you know uh, and making the noise like whistling as they did the the, the handguns I was like no I-, I like it I shouldn't but I do uh, yes, yes. I, I, mean, I, I thought obviously to actually get to you know, some serious point uh, obviously the, the messaging was pretty strong in this one with the, the fascist state of you know the robots want to control the galaxy you know control humanity it's like well you can't be trusted so we'll control you and that'll be you know happiness and obviously when they're actually fighting back at the end harry gives the, the whole speech you know you know humanity needs more than just you know food and water to sustain they need freedom yeah honestly it's so it's so in your face it almost gets lost yeah does that, does that no, make sense but it, it does yeah it's so blatant and in your face that I kind of stopped even noticing the message. There is, a, there is a point where they're literally monologuing about it. Yeah, and it's just like, well, there's not really a message anymore. It's just, it's just the plot. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, that's all it is. Uh, yeah. I, I was fun, and that was my favourite stuff, was kind of the comedy early on. Uh, yeah. And the, the yeah. build-up ha- before ha- they got Harry is a lot of fun. But once... Because I, I do appreciate that they actually... Because, you know, Star Trek, up till now, would be very, you know, case of the week, individual plots... Um, and well, some it character had growth. Some, some continuity to it, though, didn't it? It did, yeah. Because well, we met him in that last episode. He references that last episode, and you know, everyone's like, "Oh, I know who this sleaze bag is." Like, this is Except what he's like. Except Chekhov. Except Chekhov. Yeah, which fair enough. He wasn't there, so that makes a lot yeah. of sense. Which, by the way, this is actually proof. This is finally it is. proof. This is. Uh, I thought that was. This is the closest. Yeah. This is the closest thing to confirmation that we have. Yeah, of course, what we're talking about here, if you've not been watching all of these Star Trek videos, is that in Wrath of Khan, in the movie, when we get to it, there's a big sort of plot hole where Chekhov, or Khan recognises Chekhov, I think. It's that way around. But Chekhov wasn't in the show at that point. But we theorised that maybe technically he was always supposed to be on the ship, we just never saw him until season two. However, this line here, that he or this moment here where he doesn't know who Mud is and everyone else does... Is clearly indicating that he was new to the ship. Yeah, the only way I could still you know get around this, the only way at a stretch is I could say he never inter you know because he was still on the ship on that mud episode. He never saw mud, but these other these these are our main characters. They knew him. To be fair, I don't think it's even worth trying to figure out it's because. Not. At this point, I mean, Star Trek Discovery's pilot did something that contradicted something very blatantly from a Deep Space Nine episode, so the internet tells me. 
<laughs> about technology. So, clearly, when something runs as long as Star Trek has, you just have to accept that some things some things will change a little bit, and that's yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the reality when a show is, you know, 50 plus years old, it's it's going to happen. Yeah, I guess the, 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 what makes this particularly a little bit more damning is that here, the plot point is that he wasn't around for this season one character, and they make a point of it, and then later on, it's, no, no, he was here for this one. I suppose you could argue that there's like 15 episodes between the mud episode and the space seed, and, you know, it could have joined the ship during that period. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But eh, it doesn't matter. It's just it's fun to make fun of it for it, but it doesn't actually matter that much. It it, it doesn't at all. No, uh, no. Yeah, I, I I thought this was started off kind of fun and then just turned really mediocre. Ultimately, yeah. I think it was a subpar episode as a result. There was too much mediocre stuff for me to get behind. No, this. no, I have to agree. I have to say it is not a good episode, but I enjoyed it. But I've just good. noticed the credits here on IMDb. Alice Andres is credited as Alice 1 through 250. And then Ray Andres, obviously her twin sister, because obviously that's how they did a lot of this, uh, is credited as Alice 251 through 500. <laughs> you, you can tell which one of them's were twins and which one of them's they just had one person were just changing the, the number on the collar. Because mm. there's that shot at the end of them all in the line. And you and every so often there's one of them that's you know there's two of them there, whereas yeah. others there's just one of them of each model. It's like okay, yeah. so they're the ones they put out the casting call for the twins. Yeah. So an obvious way of doing it though, you just have two at any one time. Yeah. No more than two. Yeah. Have exactly. Twins. It's easy. Uh, there you go. It's easy enough. Mm. Uh, I just think that's funny how they that's how they credited them though. <laughs> one through two fifty, and then the other one is two five one through five hundred. That's actually that is a music dead dead split down the middle. That's fair. Why not just put Alice 1 and Alice 2 and then, you know, you, you just assume that all different numbers would be, you know. Yeah. Without specified. A- Alice <laughs> Various. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just credit them both as Alice, it's fine. If you've seen the episode. Do the other, you, do the other you know twins why? do that? I don't see uh, other twins. Maybe in the full cast, hold on. Yeah, Let's there was definitely at least one other set of twins. We'll see, we'll see. Oh, there's a lot of un- uncredited down here. Yeah, okay. Uh, the Herman series, they'll just credit this Herman series. That's Ted and Tom, like the Gardy. Oh, so they don't even get the number split. They're just, ah, oh, you're all of them. Oh, yeah, Barbara series is Colleen and Maureen Thornton. And then the Maisie series is Star Wilson and Tamara Wilson. So we had four sets of twins all in. Mm. <laughs> Fair enough. Sounds good. Only one mud, though. Can Only one, one mud. mud. No. Oh. Ah, dear. Uh, I suppose I'm not all... proper looking forward to getting mud on Discovery. I'm not going to lie. I think the only other thing worth mentioning in this episode is that briefly some of the crew are tempted because th- these robots are going to offer them a life that, 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 that seems beneficial to some extent because they have the best lab ever for McCoy. They have the best science lab ever for, for Spock. And it's like... These temptations. Yeah, and Ahura I, just wants to live forever. Yeah, that did bother me a little bit, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, uh, it was a bit weird. It was, but everyone else saw, oh, here's the thing, you know, Scotty, the best engineering equipment and the best engines you could ever work with. And then Ahura is just like, you could be pretty forever. It was like, this feels a bit sexist. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit cringe. E- everyone else is like, you know, what their interest is in life. That Here's the, the you know, the, the best of it. Her? No, you might be pretty, don't you? Because you're a girly girl. <laughs> Yeah, it was a little bit cringy, wasn't it? I'm glad they swerved it later on when it seemed like she turned her back on them <laughs> so she could live yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, really clear where it was going. Yeah, but like, just in case, because it, just just because it just it felt a bit off that they even went that route in the first place. It uh, did. So, so that, that's a little bit of a shame. Uh, but anyway, it was interesting that they're all male attempted, and maybe that's kind of the point. If we can back to the message of fascism, it's like, oh... You know, that's the promise is that, oh, we'll have a lot of better things because we'll all work together for... Yeah, it seems good at first. Yeah, until you realise you can't leave and you have no yeah, options. Of course it has to seem good at first, otherwise it would never have happened ever. Yeah, that's it's... some sort of promise. Yeah, yeah. Unless you just have, like, a really big army that you can enforce everything and just make people scared true but usually they have to get the army somehow oh true 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 i'm just hypothetical so i'm saying yeah, no no that's fair 
That's how you would do it. You'd rule by it's fear. Just pre-existing army. Yes. Yeah. Army of robots. That's uh, one of science fiction. That'd, that'd be useful. Yeah. yeah army of robots. So you can I could do one of those. No, you couldn't. Don't, don't give Connor an army of anything. That's a bad idea. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, so, no, so that was the episode. That was, that was the whole thing. Yep. Uh, so that is iMud. Uh, it's funny because... I feel like both of Mud's episode aren't that great, but he's really good. Like I like Mud a lot, but both of his yeah. episodes are have not been standouts. It's it kind of says a lot about the character, though, that you know, that even in a, like a, a weaker episode, they'll go, "No, he was good. We'll bring him back." Hmm. Like, you know, they could see the promise in him. I wonder if he'll pop up in season three. Does does he pop up again? Hell, maybe I, bet, up. I bet. Yeah, I bet he elevates at any episode that he's in if he does. Yeah, I'm actually I'm excited to see what Rain Wilson does with them on yeah. Discovery now. I just just to see what it's like. Uh, but yeah, so there we there we go. That that has been I am Mud. Let us know what you think of this episode in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on Twitter, mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreoncom slash TV. One of the benefits, of course, for a dollar is you get these Star Trek reviews a week early. Uh, but otherwise that is us so thank you very much for watching keep watching TV and we'll see you next time